Um, we will be giving you a late pass on Monday next week, so you'll get one of those again, a new one. Uh, many people still haven't made up the either or lab that is going in second semester, so that you basically have this week yet to get that done. It's been it's been a while. Um, it's actually pretty incredible how many of you have been missing some things and just nothing gets made up. Uh, and that's been an issue. And then uh, we're going to talk about a little bit today, but your plane crash activity is due at the end of the day. You've had that for quite a while, a long time now. Uh, so, we'll talk about that. Um, so, a couple things. This is our schedule. You've been given that a while ago, so we're going to talk about a thing called hydrates today. Tomorrow we'll do a little uh, post lab on that. On Friday we're going to play a game called Bazinga. And then we'll have our test on Monday. So, that's where we are for that. So, a couple things. As a reminder, these are all the times that we're available. Specifically on Tuesdays and Thursdays, all right? On Tuesdays, we're available 11 of the 14 mods. On Thursday, we're available every mod, every mod. Um, I'm just, I don't know, maybe, maybe the other two are doing it, but I, I hardly help anybody during any of these times. It's pretty incredible. Um, I don't know, I, I, I feel like I should start taking showers. I don't know if that's going to help, but... I, I don't get it. So anyway, uh, a lot of you, though, that's the thing, is that these are your times when you have the most PLTs as well. So um, I guess the, the frustration, or I, I'm not getting it, or I don't understand, but then we don't ever see you, but that, that's a usually a direct correlation. So just to let you know, uh, it happens in my AP classes too. The kids who get the highest grades a lot of times are the ones that we see the most. It's not the other way around. So please, if you need some help, come on in to the resource room or find us in our classroom. Okay. Uh, another thing. Please understand, for some of us, this is still a mystery. All the assignments are on the website, which has been sent to you almost every week, except for the last couple of weeks. There's been a weekly update that's been sent to you with every link and the website link. And it's on Skyward. So again, please, uh, hey, I need that. And you haven't had it for like two weeks, or I never got that one. Or you, at some point, you gotta, you got to figure that out. Okay, those of you that are thinking about going to college, some of it, they're never going to hand out anything. It's only going to be online. We're giving you the sheets, but if you need an extra one or you're sick for a couple days, or it, it's there. All right? So just, we're trying to help you out, trying to give you the ability to, to not fall behind. All right? So today, we are going to talk about the plane crash. So if you don't have it, uh, please get that out. We're going to go over one last problem. If you already handed it in, awesome. Way to go. You don't need to uh, worry about that. Okay, numerous people handed it in already. <laughs> so I'm going to go over one last problem, make sure you understand kind of what's happening because it's going to link the things that we're doing uh, today. So unfortunately, this is what happened to Mole Airlines the other day. Very tragic. All right, so I'm going to do, and again, if you've done it already, I... I'm just trying to show one of them. I'm going to do one of the passenger J's, and you can just double check your work to see if you're doing this right as a review. Maybe you haven't done it for a little while. If you have uh, been working on it, you might want to just double check this and kind of look along with me. So we have percentages. Okay? And these percentages, we can be turning them into masses. And then automatically, we're going to convert them to moles, and then we compare those. And that, it's a very a consistent step. So let's take a look at how that works. We need to make T charts, right? It's very redundant. That's the point. We have to convert things to moles. So by converting to moles, we can compare them to each other. You can't compare it by mass. It just doesn't work. If you, if you, that's a that's a long conversation in itself. So for right now, we we convert to moles. So I use 12.01, which is the molar mass. 1.01, 14.01, 16. I'm going to divide. If, if it's short, if there's a shortcut to this, it's not going to work. All right. If you interpret this differently than what I'm writing up here, what we've been doing, it, it's not the way that it's done. I understand you're just dividing, but it has to look like this because it's, it has bigger meaning later. So we get all these numbers. And again, I know I'm doing the math for you, and that's fine. Uh, but here's a key thing that we are trying to really push. You got to make sure you have three decimal points or places. If you have three decimal places, your numbers will be more accurate. Really important. Okay? If you round early, your answers might not come out. So you've got to try to make it. And if you have to go to four because it just works out, then fine. But try to get at least three. It would be vital. 
What do I do after that? What was the next step? Divide by the smallest one, right? These are technically ratios right now. Like you could estimate that, be like, ah, oh, that looks like about double that. Yeah, that, it probably is. Well, I'm not quite sure what that is. Is that 10 times that? I don't know. Well, if I divide by the smallest number, which happens to be 0.6617, I can see that ratio in an easier way. That's all it is, just a mathematical trick. If it's within 0 0.1, so 7.1, 6.9, they both round to 7. 6.9 rounds to 7, 7.1 rounds down to 7. Bottom or even closer than that. Then we'll get whole numbers. In this case, I actually have whole numbers, all of them. They're all whole numbers. That's awesome. I feel really good about that. If I don't, you know how I know if I did this well? If it comes up with nice fractions like 0.66 or 0.5 or 0.3, those are numbers that I can work with because I can multiply them by an easy whole number. So I get that. I have C8H9NO2. There's my formula. I look it up. It's on the clipboard. That's where we were saying that's kind of your answer key. It's going to show up or it's not going to show up. In this case, it shows up. I believe it's acetaminophen, which is like Tylenol. And this happens to be in that person's pockets. Oh, that dangerous person. Trying to get rid of headaches. So that's how we do it. Uh, and hopefully we've been working on that. Uh, again, a lot of people who've been pumping their eyes, I saw a lot of people in the resource room yesterday. I didn't really help anybody, but they were, they were working on it. And they were kind of finishing it up. So got to get that done by the end of the day. Uh, then there's a thing on the front page that you have to describe the story. You still have some time and you want to write a little short story of what happened on the plane, you definitely can. We'll give you a little credit for that if you're interested. You give a little short story of what actually happened on the plane. Some of you are really creative writers, you can go for it. But if you're just like Jimmy, Jimmy killed Sally because Jimmy didn't like Sally because like they had different tastes and colors. Or Hey, you can make a good story out of that, but it better be more than just that. You can tell I'm not a very good storyteller. All right, here we go. So that's how we do it. Hopefully, um, anybody have any questions about this process? Because it's the same each time. If this were 9.5, what, what would I do? Multiply that one by two? All of them. Whatever I do, I multiply all of them by a number every single time. All right, so here we go. Do you want to find your note sheet? There's a note sheet, and it looks like it's a pre lab. But it's actually a note sheet. I'm going to do some uh, practice problems with you. We're going to have a little fun as well with this. Yeah. All right. So there's two things we can do. I'm showing you the real application of this today. There are things that we can do with figuring out formulas. If I'm putting goggles on, I must be good. So, in this one, we're going to do two different labs. I'm going to do the labs, you're going to write down the data, we're going to apply it today. It says, in an experiment, 2.5 grams of zinc is reacted with excess hydrochloric acid and then heated to create zinc chloride. Okay, so, what I'm going to do is basically I have some zinc, I have some hydrochloric acid, Put that in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to collect the gas. I'm going to show you how this would react. But if I would weigh this out, which I don't need to right now because we already have the numbers, I put in the zinc. It's going to react. Thing is, it's going to react kind of slow. It takes a little while and it starts to bubble. If I put this balloon on top, Hmm. Which I've been having a hard time today already. It'll start to collect the gas, but it's really slow. So I kind of, because our uh, hydrochloric acid isn't very strong right now, I, I worked ahead. So, whoa. so there you go. Starts to bubble up. And what that does is that creates hydrogen gas. One cool thing about hydrogen gas is it's explosive. And I like explosives. Awesome, Tom. Title Balloon Clothes. 
You'd be horrible at a magic show. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> We get front row tickets. No, this isn't a lot, so it's not as cool as it could be, but it's flammable. The balloon's too small, I can't do it. It smells nasty. Let's try the rubber of the... It landed over here, so I mean... So, let's talk about how we figure this out. Again, these are notes. This is the note sheet. So, it says, here we go. Calculate the mass of chlorine in the final sample. Think about it. If zinc chloride was 5.21 grams, and I started with 2.5 grams of zinc, What's the rest of that mass? Must be chlorine. So if I take the overall mass, and this is going to help you, these are notes to help you figure out things later. So you're gonna utilize this quite a bit. You take the initial mass and you subtract what we said zinc was. Well, the remaining part would be 2.71. Right, that would be my chlorine. So just that alone already, if I weighed it all, blah, 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 I could figure out how much chlorine I have now in that reaction. Sorry, the smell is actually the rubber of the balloon. All right, now it says, now that you have the mass composition, determine the empirical formula. Instead of percentages, what if on every post-it note, I said that this is 2.5 grams of zinc, and this is 2.71 grams of chlorine, how could I figure out the ratio? So what did you do? Every single time you took your masses and we made a T-chart. So can't I just take the mass, and you don't have to do it above and below like I did. It could be all one line, one mole zinc. I, this is just a little tricky with the PowerPoint. And I can do that with chlorine. Right? And there I am. There's my two molar masses of chlorine and zinc. So I divide them. I get answers. Okay, I'm doing all the math for you first. You will need to do math later, so you will need a calculator eventually, but right now I'm doing it for you. So what do I do next? What's the next step? Those are my moles. What did you do? What have you done like 16 times in a row? Divide by the smallest number, right? That's all I gotta do. So I take the, the answers, I divide by the smallest number, and voila, I get one and two. And there is my formula. Oh. I say cray cray, but last year all the students yelled at me. I have officially been, I'm now too old to say that, I've been told, so. That is crazy. You're like, did you say it with a Y or no Y? Because it could just be cray and then Z, you know. I don't know. You burned an iPad. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to blow an iPad. <laughs> very, very great idea. Do you want to do it? Do Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, was there more? Sorry. My fault. There's more on that. Okay. Finish that up. I forgot. Uh, all right. It's also really important as we go through this, I'll tell you now, there will be lab questions on your test. That, that, that's why we're doing this. So, what if there's errors? Okay, you need to understand, sometimes an error actually, by knowing what you did, you can figure out how that affects your final answer. It says, while you were heating, and this is all in that sheet yet, right? Yeah. While you were heating, again, these are just notes. With direct heat, you allowed the flame to get too high, and some of the sample splattered out. Now, I am really frustrated, but when I printed this off, um, something did not make it onto the sheet and the other one, but what you are doing is you're heating it in this thing called a crucible. It's this little, like, clay bowl. Looks like you could, you know, a little, little espresso or some sort of a... You know. And then there's a big top. It's like, whoa, that hat is way too big for that. It's, it's supposed to look like that. And you put it in this clay triangle, and we're going to burn it. Well, what if you heated it, and you heated it a little, too, a little too hard, a little too hot, and some of it fell out? Okay? And some of the sample splattered onto the desk. So I'll add the sound effects. There you go. All right. A, if you continued the experiment from there, how would that error affect the calculated mass? Okay. If we go back for a second, which number does that affect? The sample fell out that I'm making. Which one? The 5.21, the 2.5, or the 2.71? Which one does it directly affect first? 5.2. It's that one. The sample, I lost some. So, if I knew, like I actually plopped the zinc in, What's that going to do? If this number goes down, what does that affect? Let's, let's look. So if you lose, and you can write as much or as little as you like. If you lose a ZnCl2, what happens? What's going to happen? What's going to happen to my Cl mass? Is that going to go up or down? Down. Eli, where are you sitting at? Let's see. Right here. Okay. This you're too close to me. If the ZnCl2 mass lowers, that means the Cl mass would lower. I guess is what you would interpret, right? Because you lose the beginning number, so then when you subtract it, you lose the Cl. That's, that's important. So what, why, why is that important? Well, how does that affect my empirical formula? Well, when I bring it in, this is, again, you word it however you want. You, you can do a shorter version, okay? If I have less Cl, then when I do the ratio, I'm going to have less of it. So my formula could be maybe ZnCl. Maybe it's going to interpret it that I have more Zn than Cl. right? So I could, maybe it'll interpret it as ZnCl. Maybe it'll even interpret it as Zn2Cl. But regardless, what you need to understand is because we knew how much zinc we were already putting in, it's going to mess up my chlorine. And you've got to take some steps. I don't think many people would look at it and go, oh, chlorine down. You gotta slow down, you gotta say, how does that affect my math? We're gonna practice that a little bit. And I don't know how far we're gonna get on each thing, but we'll see today. Okay, so now we're at that point. If you wanna get the other sheet out and you wanna make some observations, you definitely can as we go. Okay, so most of it's all been done for you. If you look at that and go, wow, look at all that writing. Yes, look at all that writing that you don't have to do. That was usually a pre-lab that you had to write all up. All you got to do is fill in some stuff. So first off, this is a butane lighter. Kind of cool. It works. Hey. So when they first were talking about having science in here for large lecture, I'm like, we need running water and we need gas. So now instead I have this thing that I can pump and eventually I get water. Hey, and I have gas. And you're like, wow, you really got, you didn't get what you wanted. I could have. And I found out it was going to cost about $40,000 for them to run basically two pipes in here. And I'm like, that seems like a lot. So I found this and I found that. So that's the difference. So we're going to have that running. All right, this is important now. We are going to go, let's see, I don't know what I have showing here. Okay, this is the data table that you need to be filling out. And I'm going to kind of stop talking now. My uh, chemistry teacher, when I was in high school, would do demos and not speak. So then you'd have to pay attention. So, just know. All right, so I'm going to show you everything that I do. And it's really important that you are paying attention. So be looking at that data table as we go. 
if you have questions, you can definitely ask. I will try to say something. Can we see that? Is that okay? There's a decimal right here. Can I write 2,000? 2,000. Decimal. So you could calculate something right now? Can I would have a calculator out? It's also important before I move on to the right, you need to make about two observations or so. So anything you saw, again, I'll show you everything that I'm showing you. Anything that you see. It could be colors of compounds, it could be things that are happening. Okay. Wait, that's my Something happened a second ago. It's a red right now. But something's about to happen. Hmm. I've never used these burners before. No! It's getting warm up here, that's all I know. Gosh, it usually goes by now. I don't have tongs, I can't grab them. Keep the heat in a little bit more. All right, I see some cracking in there. Oops, see that? Oh, 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 oh. It might be too bright. I'm, I'll pull away one too. 
I can't, I don't know. I, I may have living here. It's turning a whitish ash, if you want to know, in a really cool, like, Usually, actually, oh gosh, that was hot. <laughs> Usually, that lights up. Why are you not lighting up? I'm just gonna let it go. I'm gonna quit running with these. Wow, that is so not exciting. So what you should have seen, I still would like to show you. Unfortunately, I don't want to ruin the table here. So this is always tricky. Is that inside there should have done this eventually. Should have gotten really bright. Oh yeah, don't look at that. Alright, so. So if you look at this now, you probably can't tell anything. It's very white. It's very much like an ash. What I just did is I combined that with oxygen, okay? So what we're going to do right now is try to figure out the mass, but i got to let that thing cool a little bit. Okay, so we're going to let that cool. And as we're doing that, we're going to um, just start going to the next pre-lab. Again, when it's all said and done, you need to understand two uh, types of ways that we are applying the same calculations. It's the same calculations, okay? So, here's the second one. We're going to let that cool or else we'll the balance. So, right now, what you don't have are these two yet. I'm going to weigh this in a second. It is really important for you to understand when you're looking at data tables, for example, like what's the difference between this one and this one? The only difference is the word magnesium, right? So if I took this and I subtracted that, I'm subtracting all these other things except the word magnesium. So then I can find the mass of magnesium. Same idea as here. It's really important that you're understanding that because like on the test, we have sample data that you can figure out. Right, we'll talk about that some later. All right. Does anybody know what these things are on the side? What do they do? They suck out the oxygen. Yeah. What? Ah, sorry, I'm over the Yes, yes, they remove moisture. They're even in my beef jerky. It always tastes different than the beef jerky. Really weird. No. Um, it says do not eat all over the thing when it's in a beef jerky packet. So it's not a suggestion. It, don't do it. Um, so these are called desiccants. And they do. They're, they're in shoes, they're in clothing, and everything else. So this is back from my time, um, a really funny uh, Seinfeld clip. So uh, sit back and enjoy it. Craig, wait, wait, wait. do you still have that pricing gun? Yeah. Okay, I need you to help me put Putamayo out of business. Can do. <laughs> what are you doing with a pricing gun? That place is about to have the sale of the century. Nothing over 99 cents. <laughs> I'm a H.E. penny packer. I'm a wealthy American industrialist uh, looking to open a silver mine in the mountains of Peru. And uh, before I invest millions in a lucrative mine, I, I'd like to go a little native. Uh, 
get the feel of their condiments, their unmentionables, you know, the real uh, gritty gritty. Uh, let me show you what we have. Well, I think I can just browse around on my own. Mm, macho Picchu. Are these free? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You like a pie dough. What is taking you so long? Yeah, I broke the price gun, so I had to move to plan B. Plan B? There is no plan B. I took these out of every single garment in the store. What? The desiccates. See, they absorb moisture. These clothes won't last five years without them. That's not gonna do anything. Just patience. All right, forget it. What? You have screwed me again, Penny Packer. <laughs> Ladies care for some chips? Well, I don't mind if I do. <laughs> I've changed my mind. I, I think I'm going to build a roller coaster instead. And then they eat them and they get poisoned and stuff like that, so... Okay, right. All in a funny way, of course. Um, Alright, so, what we are going to do on this one, and the whole point of your second lab, is that what if you were starting a shoe company and you needed to figure out the chemical that would absorb the most moisture? Well, there's these ke uh, chemicals that we learned in naming mm -hmm. compounds called hydrates. Certain ones naturally have water attached to them. If they don't, it's called an anhydrous. So, here is all the data you need. I'm going to help go through it. So this is again on your note sheet, okay? What if I did a lab with the crucible, so I got the mass, and then I put in my compound, so I'm using sodium carbonate hydrate. So Na2CO3, and then I don't know how much water, okay? Well, what we're going to do right now, it's a really easy process. If I heat it, I can strip the water off. It's just going to heat up. And the water leaves if I heat it at a lower temp. And all the water is stripped off. So this has water on it. This one does not. And how do I know that? If you look at all the compounds, mass or, uh, elements in this, mass crucible, cover, sodium carbonate, hydrate, whoop, no hydrate. So this is the mass with the water. This is the mass without. So if you even want to make a, a note, I heated this to get to this point. This is before heating, this is after. So you have to heat this. It's going to be important for you to understand where things are coming from. Okay? So, how do I mathematically do this? I, I put this in a table to kind of help you out. Uh, in my opinion, this is always the hardest part of the test. People not understanding how to do a hydrate problem. So let's, let's break this down. What I'm trying to do, like in the plane crash activity, I'm comparing elements. In this case, I'm comparing two compounds. and comparing this thing to this one. That's the difference. And comparing how many waters are attached to one of these. So, what I need to do is get the masses. So, how do I find just the mass of the sodium carbonate only? What do I subtract? Let's call this 1, 2, and 3. Which ones do I subtract from each other? If you call these numbers 1, 2, and 3, which one do I subtract from which one to get just the mass of Na2CO3? Which one would I subtract? How would I do that? Just the sodium carbonate. I just want Na2CO3 and nothing else. Okay, we'll call this one, two, and three. What did I subtract? So if you cross everything else out and you subtract them, all you'd have left is sodium carbonate. Would it be three minus one? You might want to write that down. So I get 1.006. And again, if you only write that number down and nothing else, this sheet's going to mean nothing to you in about 25 minutes. No meaning. Okay. Uh, water. How do I just get the water? Just the water. Three from two, or two from three, right? Because that has water, that one doesn't, but that has everything else in it. So yeah, it's two minus three. Again, I'd write, I'd, I'd jot that down so I understand where those are coming from. All right, I'm in mass. Light before now, what do you do? 
Divide by the molar mass and then divide by the smallest number. So here we go. I'm trying to show you it's the same concept. This is why that plane crash activity was so darn important. The mass of Na2CO3, I added up two Na's, a C and three O's. That's where I'm getting that from. Just the molar mass. And then uh, uh, water is 18. So I get numbers. Again, I'm your, I'm your calculator right now. Those are the moles. And then what do I do? I divide by the smallest number, right? So I'm going to divide both by the smallest number. So that one should get one. Now this is the difference. This is a lab, and labs aren't perfect. So I got 8.65. You're like, oh yeah, you got to multiply that by three. Totally agree, except in this situation, because I need this to keep to stay at one. I only have one of these. So there must be some error. I must not be doing it perfectly. Right, you have to round in a hydrate lab. So I get a nine. So that means there'd be nine. Like that X right there would be nine. It'd be known a hydrate. There's nine waters that attach to that. <coughs> oh, geez. This is still on. All right. So. We're going to quickly go back. Now we're going to do the other last one too, but let's finish up the first one. All right, so this is the mass of the crucible and the magnesium oxide with the lid. Awesome. So 29.13 goes in your lab. So you should be able to get the mass of the magnesium oxide then. You can get that number down, 29.13. So then you can get the mass of that. So then the calculations, I, I, I go step by step. I literally tell you what you need to do. And this is the work that you're going to have to do outside a class. It just tells you, do what it asks. And you just use the numbers in the data table. It just goes through and it tells you, OK? All right, we only have time to do one of the other time. So I'm going to just pick one. So we're going to do the other lab then, when you're ready. And as we're doing that, we're actually going to work on some stuff as it's, as it's reacting. So if you want, you can cross out. Um, sorry. Only going to do one of the data tables. Is there more? I'm sorry. So let's finish up the... Um, <laughs> Keep forgetting there's always one more on these things. This one's the short ones. How do you figure out how well you did in the lab? Okay, so the mass of the water, you need to understand where this comes from. So this is the data table on your practice sheet. Sorry, I'm kind of bouncing back and forth. Sometimes with real-time labs, it, it's hard. Why is that the mass of the water? It's from the water above. If you want to do arrows, it's important to know where they're coming from. So that's how much of that whole compound is water. Okay, the mass of the hydrate, you need to understand what that means. A hydrate is everything. So notice what I did is I combined them. And I'm saying point blank right now, I think this is the hardest part of 
the, the ultimate test that we will have, is understanding how to do this. So, what is percent composition? Percent composition is part over the whole. Simply put, if I ask percent composition of water, what do you do? You take the part of the water over the whole thing. You already have all those numbers for yourself. You have 1.478, you have 2.484, voila, you get 59.5%. That means almost 60% of that thing is water, which makes it a really good desiccant because when it's all said and done, 60% of its weight is actually water. The key, actually, if you want to know how a desiccant is made, is that they strip the water off, so then it slowly collects the water again. Anything that's in the air. What's given to you in that last box, just keep following with me here, is this 54.4% is what it really should be, like tested in really great conditions by numerous scientists. This is the, this is the, the real value, okay? So, there's a thing called percent error. And this is what you need to understand. I'm going to put it right here. You want to write, I don't know if there's any more room anywhere else. You're going to have to start understanding percent error. It's, it's what should be minus what you did over what it should be. Now, that's an absolute value. I don't have them here. Those are like little lines on the side. You don't want a negative number. So look at all I did. I just took it, what, I, what it's supposed to be. I subtracted what I actually got over what it should be. Again, there are no negative numbers, so if you want to make little lines right here, I did not do it. It's an absolute value. 9.4% error. You want to be like, I don't know what that means. Think about your grade. If you got 9.4% off on your grade, you have a 90.6% in the class. That's an A minus. That's pretty good. If you got a 30% error, now you're at 70%, right? And that's very different. Or sick, you know, whatever. So the lower the number, the better off you are. So that's how we would do a percent error. Alright. Take out that worksheet, please. We're going to be working on this in class a little bit. I'm going to do three problems right now with you. So I just, I just alleviated a lot of calculations for you. So you don't have that much off that. So let's, let's take a look, please. Here we go. Line number five, please. Wait, on what sheet? On your new, the, what's it called? Oh, okay. Molecular and empirical formula. When you just got, please take a look. So, yeah, I don't. I want to talk over you guys. Yeah, there's, there's, upper right. 
I know I'm crazy, but I know it's... Okay, there's different sections on this. This is about two-thirds of your test. They're about, I don't know, maybe two fit. It's, it's over half. It's not two-thirds. If I ask for the empirical formula on that, as a reminder, what well, the empirical formula simply means it's the simplest whole number ratio. So how could I simplify that? I can divide by 13. Can I do both? So would that become x3y? Right? What if it was already x3y and I asked for the empirical formula? You're going to write x3y. Okay? So there are ones that are already in empirical formula. So 1 through 5, that should be pretty quick. All right? Let's take a look at number 7, though. If you're doing 1 through 5, just wait. It's actually better if you kind of go back and do it later. Let me show you how this works. Because this isn't as complicated as this looks. So the whole thing on the left, let's talk about this. So the compound was an empirical formula C4H4O and a molar mass of 476 grams per mole. What is the molecular formula? And molecular is the actual. It could be bigger, it could be the same. So here's the trick. What you need to do, and I'd write this underneath, you need to figure out what the heck this thing weighs. What did I do? How did I find that? Carbon, it weighs 12, approximately, right? So four times 12, plus four times one, plus 16. I just added up the molar masses. It equals 68. <coughs> well, wait a minute. Someone told me that thing was 476 grams. This thing only weighs 68. So this compound is bigger than this formula. So what you do is you take, and this is like this on a lot on the side. You're going to, you're like, oh, I can handle this. You take the, the actual mass, which is 476, and you divide it over the empirical mass. This is the simplest ratio, which is 68. And it didn't tell you to do that. You have to recognize that. And voila, look at that. I get a whole number. It's saying that that compound is seven times bigger than the simplest ratio. So I hope it would make sense. Then I would just take the formula and multiply it by seven. So it becomes C28, H28, O7. And if you're like, that can't be right. If you ever wanted to check it, you could take 12 times 28 plus 1 times 28 plus 16 times 7, which are the molar masses, and you get 476. That's how that would work. One more. Let's look at number 12. Again, trying to do a little bit of everything so you get a good taste and understanding of this. This isn't due until Friday, just FYI. Again, once I show you how to do each of these, you'll be like, oh, good to go. I'm giving you models for all this. All right, here we go. A sample of indium chloride weighing 0.5 grams is found to contain 0.2404 grams of chlorine. What is the empirical formula of indium uh, compound? This is like the lab we just did. I have the whole thing, I have chlorine, so what can I find right away? I can find how much uh, the indium there is, right? So, and I'm just showing you kind of how I did this, and I know you don't have a ton of space, but this is basically what I need you to do. Whoop, is you will be putting the masses, so, I'm not clapping. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is chlorine. So you'll put that right here, right? Well, how did I get the indium? I subtracted those two. Right? That's going to go here. And then what am I doing? One mole over whatever the heck indium weighs, one mole over whatever chlorine weighs. I get two numbers. What do I do with those two numbers? I compare by. Dividing by the smallest number, and voila, I should have a ratio. And it'll be I n something, you gotta understand this, if it's in this order, it's I n something, C L something. If it's a one, you don't need to write it. So that's what this sheet is practicing. It's like, oh, it's just like a plane crash. No, it's, it, it, but there's a lot of different kinds of problems. So we're gonna be working on this in class tomorrow. Are we understanding, I hope, with what we're doing in that package, just two post labs? Don't do all the data. Uh, plane crash activity is due uh, by the end of the day, so if you need to get in there at some point, please do so.